It is 5.30 p.m. and I will, on September 14th, 2020, and I will call to order the special meeting of the Board of Trustees. Uh, our first agenda item is public comment. We have two persons who have signed up to address us this evening. Uh, as, been a, as has been our practice, we will announce who we will call in advance and then we will call them. Uh, as I said, there are two persons. The first person is Chris Gafford. The topic is interim superintendent. The second person is Daisy Narva, Narvaez. And uh, the topic is pending litigation in the matter style, Jeremy Shane Mansell. So we will call them in that order. And we're calling Mr. Gafford now. As a reminder, each of the persons have three minutes to speak. Mr. Murray will be our timekeeper. While I'm getting them on the line, I'll also announce that this meeting is being a virtual meeting pursuant to Governor Abbott's temporary suspension of open meetings laws issued on March 16, 2020. Mr. Gafford. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. You have the floor to address us for the next three minutes. Great. Thank you. For over a year, I warned this board in this city that political correctness and a name change were coming. Van and Dixie was just the first step. Of course, I was right. Y'all promised at that point that the name wouldn't be changing. Yes. I'm having some feedback. I'm having some feedback issues. Hang on one second. I'm sorry. I think if you have your computer volume on or whatever, if you turn that down, then uh, we've we've had that suggestion before. Hang on one second. I'll get it. Okay. I believe that's I believe that's good. You can still hear me now. Yes, sir. I apologize. Y'all promised at that point that there wouldn't be a name change, but here we are. Once again, a lie by MISD. So there's still a lot of questions that have to be answered. And I believe we were talking about superintendent uh, tonight, and this is coming back around to that. But uh, it was reported by a mental report telegram that Rick Davis spent $65,000 on his most recent election campaign uh, to a job that pays nothing. His two opponents collectively spent approximately $5,000. Consider Ms. Davis was, Mr. Davis was the longtime incumbent with a high level of name recognition why did he spend so much money to get reelected? These are all just questions. Was it because he knew there'd be a half billion dollar bond coming up during his term? I don't know. Why did he fight so hard to canvas that election despite knowing that several hundred voters have been disenfranchised? We don't know. Why were we told that we must pass the bond and build new schools if we wanted education to improve? And yet a year later, we're told online education is great. Why did we spend half a million dollars putting the turf field in at the Young Women's Leadership Academy? Why did we spend $9 million on a golf course that's only valued at a million and a half? Why did we lease that golf course back to the owner for $1? Do any board members have personal ties to that golf course? Shouldn't the taxpayers receive the benefit of any revenue earned by that golf course since the day we bought it? Why are we paying John Norman, a Midland City Councilman, to mentor MISD students? Should the district be in a monetary agreement with the city councilman, or does that pose an ethical question? Why did that same councilman, Mr. Norman, get placed on the renaming committee? Back in 2017, when Mr. Norman, the same councilman, started an online petition to change the name of Robert E. Lee, we were told by the board, including Mr. Davis, that they wouldn't take any online petitions into consideration. Why did that change? Why is the board now acting on an online petition and ignoring a legitimate and certified petition of Midland taxpayers? Why are there reports of bullying and, and intimidation on the renaming committee? Why has the board aligned itself with the likes of Courtney Ratliff and Mercedes Buchanan? Why did Courtney Ratliff admit on public on Marfa Public Radio that he loved being a rebel and going to Lee all up until his college roommate told him that he should be offended? Why did Rick Davis tell us that they can't estimate the cost of changing the names of two schools until they know what the new name would be? Didn't Nancy Pelosi do that, too, when she told us that we had to pass the bill to see what was in it? While we're changing names, should we change Rick Davis's name from Davis to Pelosi? Why did we extend Riddick's contract by a year when he was only one year into a three-year contract? How many lives will be improved by changing the name? Will it be more or less than we're improved by getting rid of Dixie? Um, How will we measure right, the improvement of lives and so-called racial justice? Thank you very much. Okay, I got a couple more. Why is Brian good. Murray the only board member Thank with the you. integrity and character to listen to his constituents? Nick, if Why even consider one. this while so many schools are failing? Why is the new superintendent, is he going to be another failure like all the other ones Rick Davis has hired? 
And finally, how do y'all look in the mirror in the morning knowing how you screwed the entire city of Midland? All right. Thank you, Mr. Gafford. We'll now call Daisy Narvaez next. Ms. Narvaez? Yes. Hi, uh, this is Rick Davis. You have the floor, floor for the next three minutes. Welcome. Thank you. Jeremiah's D School Board. I'd like to address a grievance on Policy GF Local. Gentlemen, I'd like to start a thank you for listening to me. I ask that the school board do the right by our children. Since the name change was approved, many have come together to voice the concerns we have and have made many attempts to reach out to you to get answers. I've emailed every single member committee on this board and only got one response back. I will ask again, why is a dangerous organization with trained narcissists being allowed to interfere with our schools? We can go back into a time of when one member of such started this BLM movement in 2017. The school district did not feel like enough of the community was behind the effort. The school board responded, and I quote, the board understands the sensitivity of this issue and is continuing to listen to this community different views on it. Meanwhile, I believe that all members of this community are united in wanting us to also continue to focus our time and efforts in improving the educational environment, resources, and outcome for all students. What changed? In a time of crisis where our school has no drinking water, the AC units are not properly working, these type of issues were not addressed. This is not a safe environment for our children. On September 10, 2020, the children of Lee High School held a rally, and the element activists have stated the canon along with Courtney Rowless and Ashley Lachon showed up to stand behind our children and video record them on school property without any school parent permission. The disturbing video shows them asking for council member over and over again, Norman, because they were to escort him and others who feared going to school. If the remaining committee were afraid of children, why was the police not called? MISD police were there like they always are. These adults have no children in our school and somehow found it appropriate to stand behind our children, call them racist, uneducated, cured by the racist parents from across the street who have only given generational sin to children, have said our kids are at war. But Cannon also goes on to say how disgusting and sad it was to see young black children at a kid's rally, how Midland is so uneducated after all. Robert E. Lee was a loser, just like Trump would say. There is no place for hate in our schools. We need to ensure the safety of our children and the parents of the children that attend the school. How would any of you appreciate if any show what up to your kids, grandkids, schools, and did this? I have made attempts to reason with Ms. Mercedes, the canon, and Courtney Rowless, as well as other BLM protesters have been made. But after this group went to school property to record our minors, I've asked them to please stay away from my children. Now I'm asking the school to provide a safe environment for marches to school for individuals. I have had, this is not okay, guys. This this is not about a name change. This is nothing about a, a person that named the school 60 years ago. These people are coming to our children, threatening, getting our kids' pictures on Facebook pages and putting them, do you know this person? As some of you are campaigning to stay in your seat, I have had time. Thank you, Ms. N All right. That concludes the second and last person to address us this evening. We will now. versus Midland ISD Board of Trustees, et al., cause number CV56991 in the 238th Judicial District Court, Midland, Texas, and pursuant to Texas Government Code Section 551.074, the board will interview candidates for the position of interim superintendent. And finally, pursuant to Texas Government Code Section 551.071, 
consultation with legal counsel regarding legal issues relating to the selection of an interim superintendent. There will be an action or discussion action item rising from closed session. We will emerge from closed session. So now we are in closed session. Oh, uh, I think it was 5.39 p.m., I believe. Right, it is uh, 10, 14 p.m. and we are emerging from uh, closed session. And uh, our agenda item is number 3A, action arising from closed session, consideration and possible action to select an interim superintendent. Mr. Board President, I vote to approve the appointment of Ms. Ann Dixon as interim superintendent and authorized legal counsel to negotiate an interim superintendent agreement with Ms. Ann Dixon and further authorize the board president to execute the agreement. Second. Motion by Mr. Marquez, second by Mr. Fuller. Uh, before we vote, I should mention that uh, Mr. Trischetti did participate in the entire meeting tonight, but just had to get off because uh, he uh, attended to a sick child who awoke and needed his immediate attention. So he will not be participating in the balance of the meeting or in this vote, but it's only because he had personal responsibilities as a parent at home. Um, any uh, discussion or comments before we vote? Are we ready for the vote? All right, all, all those in favor of the motion, please raise your right hand. I see Mr. Kennedy's hand, Mr. Marquez's hand, my hand, Mr. Murray's hand, and Mr. Fuller's hand. All opposed, same sign. All right, it is, and uh, Mr. Bishop's hand is raised, so it's 5-1 uh, in favor of the motion. Motion passes. I uh, want to first thank uh, Mr. Dodds for his leadership and acting as acting superintendent. We very much appreciate his service. We uh, hope that you will welcome the opportunity to resume your, your financial responsibilities full time because we know we need your full attention to those to continue our uh, excellent financial rating. We know that uh, it, it's in safe hands with you and we very much thank you for the service you provide the district. Thank you. Uh, yep, for sure. We're very excited about uh, Ms. Dixon. Ms. Dixon has a track record of success as an interim superintendent. She is a uh, no-nonsense data analyzer, uh, gets to the heart of the problem, uh, focus on academics, and we're excited that she has uh, expressed an interest, and now we look forward to her service. We also think that she will be a tremendous benefit in helping us uh, uh, find a permanent superintendent. So we're excited about Ms. Dixon. We look forward to her service to the district as well, uh, while others continue to work hard and focus on uh, getting children back into school and learning full time. So it is now uh, 10, 17 p.m. and we are adjourned. Thank you.